Hello everyone and welcome back to the Brightworks. Today I've got a match for you on Supreme Isthmus and I'm really enjoying this match. I'm uh or this map rather. I'm really glad that we are sort of seeing this pop up more and more here. It's a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a change to the Supreme Straits but I think it really does complicate the way that the teamwork develops here on both sides. That's a fun little guy waving hello. <laughs> Now you might notice a little bit of a graphical change here. I've toggled a couple of little settings here that I think might improve a uh, viewer perspective here. You, of course, the viewer, that's right, you. I'm pointing at you through the screen here. While I've got your attention, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Always happy to have you here. Hope you're having a wonderful morning or, uh, well, evening, you know, whatever time of your day you're enjoying this video. I hope you're having a wonderful one regardless. Spawning on the southern side of Supreme Isthmus today and representing our red team, it's going to be Storm of Steel. Storm of Steel is playing in the C lane position, and it's a complicated one. I'll have to touch back here to see what strategy we're going for, but already going for a bot lab, which tells me... <coughs> whoa! Excuse me, professional commentator Brightworks here. Tells me that it's going to be a little bit more passive of a... Uh, a little bit more passive of a start here. All the way on the other side of the map, representing the blue team, it's going to be Squala B right up, lined up against the red team leader here. Going to be going right into that naval play as a Cortex commander. I think this is pretty much stock standard, yeah. A little bit of, little bit of defense here. Laser tower uh, to guard some of these metal extractors, but the coverage is not really global on these metal extractors here because these uh, wind turbines are going to block some of that, and also, of course, the tech could sneak around the side here. All that being said, though, I think one laser tower is better than no laser tower. <laughs> Squall B going into that Cortex naval start, and I really like the Cortex start here because it does allow you to get those missile ships out, and those missile ships can deny this coast metal extractors essentially indefinitely. They're really, really good at denying that, and of course you can harass all the units and whatnot that are over here too, but taking away four, maybe 8.6-ish metal per second coming into your enemy's uh, economy, yeah, that is well worth it, especially for a very minimal investment here on the behalf of the blue player. Not seeing that cheeky start that we saw a little while back, I forget what the name of that video was, uh, but I'm sure you watch every video that I put out here, so uh, you, you know exactly which one I'm talking about, never missing a video. <laughs> uh, it was the one where we saw a player walking forward, it was the player that usually started right here. Uh, instead of starting right there, they started over here, right where our, uh, our hot pink player started. And they walked into the water here and got these three metal extractors and then went right into a naval lab and contested this northern sea. That was a really interesting build and actually I think it has a lot of merit. Okay, so you can see the uh, visual change here indicating the vision range of different players here. And so you can see the color corresponds to the player here and uh, that kind of gives you hopefully a bit of a better perspective as far as exactly which player can see which player. They kind of fade into each other, which I honestly wish they didn't i almost wish we had a different vision radius but i guess that would also clutter things up a little bit here but anyways if you're now wondering what these little colorful bulbs are <laughs> it's a uh, it's an indicator for exactly who can see what i think it does improve clarity though right like you kind of get a better sense of who is able to see here uh and who is able to see what rather than just the the uh, overall global vision that we have as spectators over on the other sea lane, looks like Sick Duck has gone for a hovercraft start here. A couple of goons already produced, hiding in the bushes over here. <laughs> a couple more over here as well, and uh, I would love to see these move across the map. We're actually a little late on that. Uh, the, yeah, these definitely should have moved across the map as soon as they possibly could have. I wonder if these were misrallied here. Sending a couple of these early hovercraft across the map, basically queuing them. Whoa! Super early commander death. Wasn't even ready for that. It looks like it was a commander trade, actually. Commander kind of slipping and sliding in the water there. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be because Modok's commander going right on down with Tiny Legs commander. Detective Tiny Legs going down for the force. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's two commander wreckages. That's now a, a point that you need to fight over. Get some units out on the field because there is, uh, there's, there's a lot of metal to be eaten up right there, and it needs to be eaten up. Sniping the metal extractor, very nicely done over there. What I was saying is I'd love to see these queued across the map in this sort of a way. Try and snipe the backline economy of the sea lane or the uh, beachhead player over on this side. Usually a very, very potent start if you're going for that hovercraft start. It typically ends up working out well. And yeah, we can see these missile trucks. I mean, man, they can just harass away for miles and miles. They can just retreat back. Goon's not going to have that much of an effect on them. Uh, maybe, maybe if we jumped on top of that, we could get the kill here. But instead, going to back off with the goons. And I'm not really sure if that was the right decision here. Uh, maybe, maybe kill one of them. Okay. One of them goes down, but I don't think you're going to be able to kill all too many more of them. Louis Baron, uh, or maybe it's Lois Baron. Not quite sure. We'll go with 
Leo Baron. Leo Baron. <laughs> Our uh, Aquamarine player here for the blue team has gone into a naval lab off of this uh, triangular position, this midline position start. Interestingly, we are still seeing the green player here going for that T2. However, you don't get the geothermal anymore, so getting the energy production for it is actually really, really difficult. And as we can see, with the wind speed as low as it is right now, uh, Zinaeus, uh, Zinaeus, Zinaeus having a tricky time getting the energy to actually build the lab. Has the metal, doesn't have the energy. That's a bit of a rare occurrence. Usually it's the other way around. Either way, though, getting that quick T2 up is always really nice. Jimmy Jim James has managed to eat up one of these wreckages. Still another one lying in the dirt over there. I'm not sure why we didn't go for that one as well. I feel like it'd be well worth it. Maybe you didn't see it. Yeah, maybe that's the problem here. Retreating a little early. Like, the commander is healthy. The There were some units harassing over on this side. There's basically no units over here. I'm not sure why we're not harassing here. Yeah. Bit confused about that. Shuriken's going to stop a potential run by over here. And all will be well on the northern fronts here. The, the front, well... I guess it's not really the northern front. It's like the mid mid front, <laughs> the mid line, the 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 center line. What is it called in football? The uh, the, the the line of play. <laughs> that's what that's what uh, supreme straight supreme miss miss. That's what that's what this is right here. This is the line of play. Anyways, Storm of Steel has also gotten into the water, getting his feet wet. However, going to be getting their feet wet in the uh, the little bay side over here has gone into quite a lot of static defense couple of these offshore torpedo launchers uh, which fire depth charges and those are I mean they're quite nice they they definitely can pack a little bit of a punch and three of them clustered together should be enough to dissuade any of these ships from getting too uh too close here oh however however if you park right behind that island yeah that's actually great parking right behind the island so that there's no way to uh no way for these depth charges to actually hit you there very efficient move right there that's a nice little micro trick very nicely done here Commander could, of course, try and uh, solve this issue. Looks like we're going to move the constructor here. Yeah, that's so annoying. Basically losing that for free. That's a real uh, that's a real bummer right there. Oh, yeah, don't lose the constructor, too. That'd, that'd be a double bummer. Nobody's into double bummers. Okay. So we're settling into a fairly standard naval game. The naval play for the Northern Sea is going to happen over here. The naval play for the Southern Sea is going to happen over here. I guess that's, uh, I mean, more or less the same as usual here. Sick Duck is already going into a, oh, interesting, a T2 vehicle lab here. I guess that makes sense with the t with the uh, hovercraft out here. We really need to eat up this, yeah, this uh, hovercraft gantry because at this point it's not really serving any purpose and we're just, we're ju we just have 900 metal sitting down, checking the price there. I thought it was 900, but I didn't want to, didn't want to get it wrong. 900 metal just sitting around here, not really uh, doing all too much. Would probably be better served as a uh, T2 vehicle bay here. Now, what are we going to go for out of the T2 vehicle bay? Obviously, alligators are a, uh, a decent choice here. Maybe not so obviously. Maybe maybe uh, some of you haven't been watching the streams Tuesdays and uh, Saturdays on YouTube or Thursdays on Twitch now. Twitch.tv slash Brightworks. Brightworks TV? Is that, what, is that how Twitch works? I don't know. Brightworks TV. Go drop a follow over there. Feel free to tune in for the, some of those shenanigans. <laughs> Anyways, uh, in case you haven't been watching that, I've been playing the uh, scenario that I do before the streams, and one of the things that pops up a lot in that scenario are those alligator tanks. And man, do those alligator tanks hurt. They're so durable, and they can pack such a tremendous punch. They're really, really difficult to deal with as a, uh, a T1 player. You really desperately need T2 in order to effectively shut them down. And even then, it's still challenging. They're just a... Uh, they're a... They're a brutally effective unit i wouldn't even mind seeing them on the front line and in, in replacement for tigers especially on a map like this because you can i mean you can almost imagine them dipping into the uh dip, dipping into the front lines getting a couple of shots and retreating into the water and then back into the front lines right like you could just pull them out and then go back this way and then regroup and then push in for another attack like you could you could uh, very easily maneuver them around is all i'm trying to say i think they're extremely viable and uh dangerously powerful Backline looks like just tech for now. King Boss going for some T2 metal extractors. That's very nice. Should probably eat up this T2 or T1 lab rather. And I think we probably have enough build power as well. Still some metal in the bank though. So might as well spend it. Uh, Air lab over here. Fairly standard. Just getting a T2, T2 uh, economy up and running before transitioning into T2. That's 
fairly standard as well and it looks like economic growth of a sort of variety is happening over here we have tidal generators going up all over the place we have wind turbines being constructed by a constructor on the offshore we'll love to see a t2 coming and upgrading all these mexes even if it's not given just plopping down the t2 blueprint right whoops there we go popping down the blueprint just so that you can uh, eventually upgrade those Janus is perfect for destroying those uh, those heavier defenses, but also you have to be so careful with them because once those Janus's go down, they really can't get any more value out. I mean, sounds like an obvious statement, but it's just doubly true for the Janus because it really does benefit from multiple firings, right? You, you, need, to, you need to dip it into combat and then pull it back out, dip it back into con combat, pull it back out. Similarly to the Gunslinger, although at a much less, uh, much, much less sustained rate of damage. Little roll by happening over here. A couple of amphibious tanks do sweep up the shoreline and into the base here of our lavender player, Jimmy Jim James, who now is left but not but a wind turbine and a constructor to their name. And uh, even those will fall here shortly. Only the front line remains here for Jimmy Jim James, and that is actually severely crippling as an agitator was being put up, but now there's no energy whatsoever to fix this issue. T2 Lab goes down right here too, and that is so, so painful. Yeah, losing that T2 lab means no T2 unit production, which is usually the solution here. That's, that's usually the, the the saving grace to any of this aggression that usually comes out first, is that T2 units are going to be able to clean it up. But with no T2 lab available, yeah, there's just not going to be very much. I mean, there's a single hound doing its best. You can see these pincers, I mean, they're fairly durable. Yeah, they're not, uh, not to be underestimated, especially now they've got a little bit of experience under their belts as well. These are some bronze and silver bar heroes. <laughs> multiple chevrons to each of their names and uh yeah i mean at this point they've done their damage right they've ravaged the green base they've completely eradicated the lavender base and now they're headed into the back line i don't know how much more damage they're going to be able to do back here because there is a commander that should be able to shut all this down however at the very least they're getting a decent scout on all of this as well as their aggression very nicely done a combined arms of forces here we do have some shurikens to assist the naval forces of storm billy Shurikens provided by Tony L and uh, Naval Forces contributed by Storm Billy. It's a good bit of teamwork right there. If there was ever a time to aggress right now, uh, well, it would be right now. <laughs> that, uh, that sentence got a little out of hand, but you get what I'm saying. The economy has been destroyed here for Jimmy Jim James. Commander has been forced to retreat backwards to rebuild back here. Um, not not much left to do other than just push in here and slowly start to siege all this. Shell Shockers should definitely start whittling away at all this static defense that is hardly with power. The Agitator should start to be bursted down. We really need to jump on top of that as quickly as possible. This Agitator coming up actually secures this line so much, so much easier than uh, otherwise if it hadn't been built. It's rare that I praise a uh, Agitator or a Gauntlet, but in this very specific circumstance, it will be the defining thing keeping this line alive. That being said, it is a little bit hindered by these towers in front of it here, not able to fire because, well, it doesn't want a friendly fire. It may be Cortex, but at the very least, it is, uh, you know, it's it's aware of the, the pains that it causes. <laughs> you can always remedy this, of course, by switching it into high trajectory mode. And if you switch it into high trajectory mode, it hits with a little more oomph, too, which is not always the wrong decision when you're trying to break large lines of static defense like this, where you have turrets upon turrets upon turrets with build power and units and all that good stuff. Definitely worth considering here, especially since, well, otherwise it's not really getting any value out whatsoever. It's the main problem with those agitators and gauntlets is, yeah, they're great and they deny a big area, but they, I mean, the area they deny is so minuscule compared to the area that T2 can challenge, right? That's something that I don't cover very often, but as you upgrade your technology level, you also upgrade the amount of space, just raw physical space that you can occupy effectively just because most of them can reach a little further, hit a little harder, uh, all that good stuff. This is becoming a massive wreckage field here, by the way. 6,000 metal in grand total. And I think it's well worth trying to eat some of that up. Indeed, we do see a resbot here trying to gobble, gobble, gobble as much of this delicious corpse chow as it can and uh, recombine it into forces for the army over here. Uh, yeah, okay, geothermal is starting up here. That's very nice. Uh, no geothermal and this spot right here that's worth pointing out. The lack of the geothermal is worth pointing out, I do be. We have gone for a very complex composition over here for the red player. <laughs> it's, uh, it's dolphins. And, uh, if you're looking for anything else, you aren't gonna find it, because it's just dolphins. Oops, all dolphins. 
Uh, Buccaneer is pretty good against Dolphins. Not the pinnacle of solutions to Dolphins, but definitely one of the better options. Dolphins have this weird trait where once they get into big enough numbers, they can just surround ships and do a obscene amount of damage. Just, just ridiculous amounts of damage. However, the gunboats here actually contributing tremendously because it allows for that flanking damage, and that was all shut down really nicely. Lovely work right there by our blue player. So for the for anybody who might not know, the, the flanking bonus in increases weapon damage by up to 90%, right? So you can do almost double damage if you have two units attacking from different directions. So these gunboats getting behind the dolphins and doing damage means that these buccaneers are nearly doubling their damage potential. It allows them to really whittle through those dolphins' holes, and it can certainly make for a really, really nice engagement, as we just saw right there. Res subs, of course, to uh, accommodate for the massive clump of metal that is now laying at the ocean floor. And I think the blue player has solidly won the naval engagement. A couple more, uh, couple more trades just like that, and I think this is going to be an easy victory here on the seas, especially considering our red player is still on T1. T1 does fall off in the uh, naval field just as well. You have to be careful because T1 ships can still contest T2 eventually, but it's uh, it's it's it takes it still takes a lot. The ships are moving in here, but I'm going to keep focused on the middle island. We can see these rocketeers pushing in here, switching to cinema cam as we watch some of these rocketeers trying their very best to break the lines, but they will hold for now. Beamer turrets assisted by Overwatch turrets. That's right. Beamer turret more powerful than the Overwatch turret. Get in the comments, haters. <laughs> Beamer supremacy. Janus tank, or sorry, uh, Janus, well, yeah, Janus tanks firing on medium tanks, the brutes here. Uh, not bad. Definitely great for slowing those tanks down here. A couple of them do break the line, but I feel like they will be cleaned up relatively quickly here as the uh, the rest of the line is held. There's not much more aggression that can be mounted. And all said and done, a very, very nice hold here for the red team. Actually, better than nice. They now have all of this metal at their disposal. They can res all of that, reclaim all of that. Whatever they choose to do, it's going to all go back into their pockets one way or another. And that just means a bigger, badder, better army next engagement. Uh, oh, that's the wrong button here. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, Buccaneers are the way to go here. Just keep making more and more and more of them. Wouldn't even mind a Despot queued up in here as well. The uh, Battleship. Especially because there's so much metal to reclaim here with these res subs. We should probably get a couple more of those working on this res field, or this uh, reclaim field now that I'm thinking about it. At the very least, we're spending all the metal, so that's good. Going for a couple of these messengers here, the cruise missile ships, in order to try and deal with a little bit of damage. Storm of Steel doing uh, a couple of, well, doing, getting a couple of res subs out as well to try and eat up these wreckages, but those Buccaneers have a depth charge launcher, and it will not be too long before they find these res subs here, Grim Reapers. Well, you know, I say that, it's not going to matter if the Grim Reapers are just AFK, so I guess, uh, you know, I guess they were just aesthetic Grim Reapers. <laughs> Commander is pretty far forward here, too. It will cloak. He's going to try and self-destruct, but yeah, the blue player is going to move out of the way there. Good idea. Trying to use the commander to hit this navy. That's definitely one of the ways that you can make a comeback, is if you sneaky, stealthy, uh, manage to get your commander underneath the enemy's uh, navy here. But those depth charges are just too powerful, and that will be all she wrote here for the red player's commander. I think that definitely seals the deal as far as naval control goes. It's going to take some impressive airplay in order to re uh re balance this towards the red player's favor meanwhile the front lines are collapsing oh nuclear bomber nicely done got to target those big clumps of units and that's exactly what the nuclear bomber is doing here you can see it being constantly retargeted very nicely done here by renevorous trying desperately to uh hit the the biggest clump of units possible oh 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 oh, oh. there we go yeah no, not not like that. You want to hit you want to hit uh, Y, I believe is the the default key. I've switched mine up a little bit, but uh, Y is the default key in order to target, and then just yeah, I mean target a central one, right? That's pretty good though, right there. Manages to take out a lot of those hounds, and uh, the damage is done to Jimmy Jim James, but I think that was about as clean a hold as you could hope for. These units need to push in here. If they do a little bit more damage in this direction, I think this is going to be a quick game. I know from the replay that it's not going to be, though. <laughs> oh, how things could go so differently. A lot easier to see from the, uh, you know, the spectator seat. Not so easy to see when you're actually in the hot seat playing these games. 
I watch just as many of my own replays as I do replays that you lovely folks send in to me. And, uh, yeah, let me tell you, my, my, uh, palm is placed firmly upon my forehead a lot of the time. <laughs> Looking back at all the decisions that I've made and thinking, why? Why would you do this, Mr. T and T Brightworks? It doesn't make any sense. The past is always clear. Anyways, enough, uh, enough philosophy, I feel like. Navies are growing here. We have about 12,000 metal in the pink navy, southern side. About uh, 21,000 metal in the blue navy over here. All T1, so we'll call it a relatively even comparison here. And uh, yeah, I mean, 21 greater than 13 means that I favor the blue navy here. But unfortunately, Laos Baron, our, uh, our, our, our navy player, our navy blue player, well, not navy blue, I guess, our uh, aquamarine blue player, it's being a little bit uh, a little bit timid with the forces here. I really feel like we could start to apply a little bit of pressure. Maybe think about spreading these out and getting a proper concave going, making sure that we have a decent spread on these units and then starting to slowly push inward here one by one. Yep. Looks like that's kind of the plan here. Definitely want to make sure these are organized properly as well. Want to try and at the very least get the uh, frigates in the front and the destroyers in the back and the missile carriers somewhat in between Not the uh, not the end of the world and you'll never really be able to maintain that formation not without some stellar micro and a lot of hotkey control and uh, If you know me, you know, I like to play with not but three hotkey control groups <laughs> I have one for my assault units. I have one for my ranged units and then I have one for my res bots and that's it I'm not a big fan of hotkeys. They get in the way of all my uh on my perspective here. But certainly I'm not the pinnacle of hotkey control. Always room for improvement. Missile ships going to besiege this uh, northern area. Very, very stock standard. This is exactly what these missile ships are meant for. Shut down this geothermal up here. Wouldn't mind seeing them try to target this navy over here. Oh, these are actually out of position. Well, then I should say the navy is out of position. The blue player's navy is, uh, yeah, a little bit too far back right now. Uh-oh. Yeah, those dolphins have found their target. This is a juicy hit right here. 6,000 metal worth of uh, navy. And the dolphins are moving in for the kill. Where is Blue's forces? Blue's forces are sleeping on the job here. Missile ship's going down right now. That's a huge waste of metal. Definitely can't afford that. Finally, the Blue Navy reacts here, but that is way, way too late. Those missile ships are going to have to be rebuilt if we want to continue to besiege these positions. Uh, there's so much metal that's going to have to go into those. It really shuts down your spiral quite a lot. Not to mention how much metal is in those, uh, you know, those little corpses over here which I think the uh, red player would do well to try and eat up if I were in their shoes. EMP bombers here. Oh, they could get a huge connection. Could get a huge connection. Massive connection right there on the blue player. Oh, that's a tremendous EMP bombing right there. Shutting down essentially the entire blue navy. That is, uh, what are we looking at here? About 20,000 metal worth of stunned units right now. This is about as good a trade as you could ever hope for. This is a huge play right now. Excellent EMP bombing by the red player, or by the orange player rather. Massive, massive engagement. The pink player taking a phenomenal trade at this point. Going to be shutting down so much of that otherwise massive blue army. Very, very nicely done. That EMP bomb, oh, well, nice little nuclear bombing right there too. Evening up the battle. Eventually the air forces are gonna be able to remedy this, but man, that could have been game over for the blue player. I think it was about 80, maybe 90% of that Navy was completely paralyzed for a second there. Wow. Very, very nicely done here by our powder blue player, Renivorous. Managing to, uh, yeah, come in at the very last second with the nuclear bombers, even up that fight here. They will eventually go down before targeting any crucial infrastructure, but man, they saved the day right there because otherwise the pink player had a massively positive trade. That could have been a nightmare here for our blue player. That was, a, that was really nicely done. It's, it's always uh, terrifying to deal with a Armada player who knows what they're doing with the EMP bombers. You can get a huge amount of value out of those bad boys, especially in the late game, especially in these massive T1 navies. So many clumped up units that you really can start to get a huge value out from them. Okay, missile ship included in here. I actually don't mind it. Oh, are those gonna connect? Well, they do connect. Oh, oh wait, never mind. <laughs> Perspective is weird. Uh, they do not connect, at least not all the way. T2 meets T1, and this is the critical juncture where T1 can engage with T2 and still have a fighting chance here, but they 
have to engage and fight this chance, right? They, they These destroyers need to kill this player. Otherwise, all this metal going down, and if there's any chance of rebuilding, this T2 is eventually going to win the day. Now, EMB bombers once again coming in for the rescue. Cataphracts are included back here, and these are great as uh, depth charge launchers, but also technically they work as anti-air. Not usually they're a prime directive, but certainly possible. Buccaneers now going to town on all this. Got to be careful not to EMP your teammates units. Ooh, it was so close. Eventually, Buccaneers going to whittle all of this away, but uh, it does take a while. GG. <laughs> Pardon me if you just heard a little bump in the microphone. I had to mute myself for a coughing there. Oh, yeah. I mean, kind of paralyzed the, the teammate Buccaneers here. That's one way to slow down the cleanup. Unfortunately, uh, I think the blue player needs to go T2 right now. I think this is exactly when you start going for a T2 lap. All this trail of metal all the way over here. I mean, is this even going to give me a good reading? Six and a half thousand, almost two thousand, thirteen thousand. Uh, whoever eats that wins the naval battle. Which whichever player manages to eat up all that metal is going to win the naval battle here. Right now, units are streaming out of the production facilities here for Lois Baron, uh, and likewise for Stormbilly. Both of them just trying to pump out units as well as they can here. Fighters going to shut down the enemy fighters as well as the nuclear bombing here. Nice little hit to the tidal power, but there is a lot of wind power here for Stormbilly, which is quite nice. Going to, at the very least, keep the economy relatively intact here. Build power going down is a problem, though, and eventually, hey, you know what? More units beats less units, and the destroyers are starting to pack a wall up here. Not a lot of build power to keep units storming out here, and uh, this is suddenly becoming a problem. Cataphracts over here will be EMP'd. Kind of a band-aid on that wound, though. Need some way of dealing with those. Need a constructor. Need a lot of stuff to happen right now. Stormbilly needs to get this constructor in gear and start building some more build power over here. We uh, also need to see a whole lot more uh, metal in the bank. Oh, looks like the constructor did go down here. With no way to reclaim all this, I am going to say that the blue player has solidly won the Navy, despite the phenomenal airplay here. I just don't think there's any way for the pink player to come back into this now. Cataphract are rolling up the beach and are going to start dismantling all of this economy. That's no good. EMP bombers trying their very absolute best, but that's so many cataphracts rolling out of the base of Sick Duck. Let's talk about defense, too. Bulwarks, heavy laser turrets, twin guards, agitators, scorpions... Are these uh no these aren't exploiters i was wondering if those were the uh, the advanced the advanced metal extractors as well everything and some more guarding the front lines over there this wave of cataphracts is going to become a problem cataphracts have this weird problem where they try to be anti-air <laughs> and then they waste their shot and then they don't have it for when you actually need them to fire i uh i feel like that is a bug that should probably be addressed rather than a feature uh, either way, though, they will start shooting down these planes, I suppose. Stormbilly is trying to position his commander in such a way that these uh, cataphracts have no choice but to engage with the commander. Just be careful not to run out of energy, though. Uh-oh. Sharpshooters are going to move into position here. Okay. I don't mind the sharpshooters. I think this is a good, uh, good option. Whoa, we've got vanguards rolling out as well here. Getting into that proper T3 production, and I love to see it. Yep, rolling out of the back line here. Oh, okay, interesting. We've got tumbleweeds going up north here. Now, there is a stable counter to Tumbleweeds. You need a sonar station and a couple of these advanced torpedo torpedo launchers here. The Lamprey, if you're a Cortex player. That will more or less show you exactly how much, uh, exactly how much vision you need in order to, in order to shut down these Tumbleweeds. But, uh, I mean, right now, the Tumbleweeds are already here and that defense needs to be in place before, before then. Uh-oh. He's going to be manually detonated. Oh, that one will be killed. Nope. Manually detonating them makes them much, much more powerful. But it is often a, uh, a huge APM use. Nice big ball of units right here. This would be perfect for an EMP. Spare a couple of EMP bombers over in that direction. We could definitely get a really nice trade against all of those hounds right there. Wouldn't mind it. Wouldn't mind it whatsoever. Lightning tanks versus cataphracts. I mean, a lot of them are paralyzed right here. It's a weird solution, but I mean, whatever works. <laughs> whatever works. Anti-air ships here as well. They are the T1 anti-air, so, you know, nothing, not, not, not the most impressive thing to write home about, but certainly going to be enough to 
uh, dissuade some of those units from flying over the, the the aerial units. Well, I suppose any unit, really. You can see they can still fire away from long range here. Ah, uh, cataphracts. I wish they were a little better. I really do. I almost wish instead of a uh, a laser pulse like that. Sorry about that. A little bit of a little bit of a pause there. Instead of a pulse like they do, uh, or rather instead of like a, a constant beam like they fire, I almost wish they would fire a blast. Like a, I mean, I just want them to be the Star Wars tank. Can I make it any more obvious? <laughs> little uh, funny interaction here. These don't have a sonar vision. I think he uh, sniffed it out there. I don't believe they have a sonar vision anyway. Uh, meaning that if there's underwater units, they can't see them. Yeah, because they can't see submarines either, so... Yeah, they they uh, they really struggle when you when you start to try and deal with any sort of underwater units, which is uh, I don't know. I think that's pretty funny. Tumbleweeds also actually work as a great counter to capital ships, because capital ships can't see underwater, which means that they tend to uh, tend to fail in the sense of dealing with with tumbleweeds streaming on underneath them. Tick spams are now starting up uh, for both sides. Hot pink players starting up a tick spam. A tick spam was already underway here for uh, our backline player, Renivorous, the, the backline air player, the blue team. Fairly standard stuff, though. Still just doing dolphin production here. We do have T2, at the very least, for the uh, the red player. Have we started up a T2 economy? I really think a T2 economy might be the right move here. Start going for some advanced fusion reactors. Start going for some uh, advanced energy converters. Just start stepping into that T2 economy. Use whatever wreckage you can eat off this field here and uh, step into that properly. So many hounds right here. Hold on. How many hounds do we have in total? Across both sides, it was over 100 just a second ago. Couple of miracle fat boy connections and two nukes collide. Huge, huge connections right there for the blue team. Shutting down a massive portion of the red team's hound army. Wow. This is carnage. The ticks here causing so much friendly fire from these fat boy. Aiming at their own units, aiming at themselves, trying to shut all the ticks down. Oh my goodness. Who knew the tick could do so much damage to the fat boy? Those who underestimate the tick are doomed to fall to its power. Sharpshooters here deal with the fat boys pretty well. They're, uh, they're a decent counter there. They can eventually whittle down those fat boys. I think it takes a couple of shots, though. I want to say three or four. Fat boys are very sturdy. For a price, you definitely pay for that sturdiness. Looks like it's about three. What was that going to end? 62? Yeah, three three shots in order to melt down a fat boy. Which is significant for sharpshooters, but also not the, uh, you know, not the... Not impossible. And especially once you have this many of them mounted up together. You can certainly blast away at these units like it's nothing. Yeah, dealing with these sharpshooters is really hard, especially with these ticks being split in the wrong direction here. These ticks are just being wasted on static defense. They would do much better to try and counter these sharpshooters. Sharpshooters right now just getting an infinite trade against all of the enemy units over on this side. That's really, really painful to deal with. Very difficult. Capital ship was built here for Lewis. Laios. Oh, it looks like tumbleweeds are being launched as well. Yeah, no, tanks don't even, the uh, the hover tanks don't even really deal with the tumbleweeds either. Non-sufficient enough numbers. You can see that even firing and dealing with them, quote-unquote, effectively, the uh, tumbleweeds still did a little bit of damage to these bad boys. Tumbleweed costing, well, well about 60 metal, I do believe, 65 metal, versus the uh, hover tanks, 950. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a wildly inefficient trade for the hover tank user, making them a very, very dangerous solution. A dangerously good solution. <laughs> That's why I often nerf them whenever I do the stream. Whenever I'm uh, whenever I'm live and whenever I'm hanging out with you guys playing games, oftentimes they'll turn on a setting that makes the uh, a custom setting that that uh, Fragnarok made for me. Shout out to that guy. Wonderful, wonderful fellow. Uh, basically enables the tumbleweeds, bed bugs, and scuttles to all run on top of the water, float on top of the water, similar to hovercraft, uh, as opposed to floating around underneath it. Which I think makes a lot of sense, right? Like the tumbleweed looks like one of those big inflatable ball things that you would use. <laughs> you know, we all dreamed about crossing the Atlantic Ocean. And... No, it's just me. Well, anyways. There are the B-bombers. A little late to this party though, as the T2 lab has already been melted away. Cataphranks 
beaming down whatever they can here. Vanguard's firing away, doing probably the most damage out of anything here. Sharpshooter is also going to be contributing, though. The problem, this, again, this is the problem with cataphracts, right? They fire on a tick, and then their shot is wasted, and it's very similar to sharpshooters. Uh, however, they cost significantly more than sharpshooters, so it's a, uh, I, I mean, it's, uh, it's one of those reasons why I feel like they're so often neglected here. The Lunkhead, the Armada counterpart, is much, much better. It fires like a, I mean, it fires a bomb that comes out of a bomber, uh, out of a cannon, which is just pretty rad in and of itself. Um, but also just the fact that they can fire so much more often makes them, I feel like, a whole lot more viable. One of those discrepancies that makes one of the uh, faction's units just that much better than the others, which is sort of a bummer. I really, I really wish that wasn't the case. Maybe someone can make a mod, make a, uh, a tweak units that makes the cataphract fire a blast similar to the uh in my mind it'd be similar to the oh what's that unit called the uh the seaplane gunship for armada i believe it's called the saber fires a little laser beam blast if they just fired a, a green one of those i think that'd be pretty cool this is a lot of cataphracts though <laughs> double gantry production of cataphracts is pretty impressive don't get me wrong here. Sick Duck is spending the metal well. Knows how to knows how to spend his metal for sure. But uh, cataphracts, man. There's just nothing you can do. I really wish they were better. I really do. I think going for maybe a Shiva or maybe even a Juggernaut at this point would probably be well worth it. Well, multiple Shiva. Let me be clear. <laughs> multiple Shiva would uh, probably do well for the 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 green player here, the lime green player. I think that might be able to besiege these beaches just a little bit more effectively than the Cataphract will. Cataphract will trade fairly well against the Race Mac. I do believe the Cataphract have a slightly higher range. Let me verify that real quick. Range of 725 versus the Razorback's 475. Wow. Way higher than the Razorback. Yeah, you can see they actually do pretty... They do trade pretty well against the Razorbacks there. EMP Bombers trying to get a connection over here. Basically just dissuading these kind of making a problem for themselves though and their teammate because these are just going to build up in big and bigger and bigger and bigger numbers until eventually things start to get out of hand massive navy battle over here looks like the red player did eventually step into t2 i mean it'd be wild if they managed to fight this all on t1 but uh there there is still a t1 lap up and out dolphins like crazy it's paladins all over the place and i really think we need to think about getting a dreadnought out here you you really do need the firepower that comes out of the, the battleships here the dreadnought uh, we can see the despot has been included here for the cortex player and it just it provides you with so much firepower in the back line that it really can't be overturned paladins especially struggle in that firepower department they just kind of fall short their lasers are not very powerful their their main gun is likewise not very impressive here and i feel like this is a great example of exactly what i'm talking about paladins doing their best to jump on this army but there's just not enough firepower coming out of their three nosed snozzle as opposed to the uh, the three-nosed snozzle of the despot here, which fires away a heavy Gauss projectile. And that is going to be the Red Forces. It's utterly decimated here. Red Sub's trying to uh, eat up some of this wreckage here. Paladin's trying to deny that, but I don't think they're going to be able to. That's another nine and a half-ish thousand metal going into the pockets of the blue player here. An impressive hold from the red player to manage to stay in this game. But at this point, that is a, uh, the, the metal numbers are just spiraling and with the capital ship already banging on your door. It's a very tough look. Advanced Geo went down over there as well. Cataphracts being EMB bombed to death. <laughs> Cataphracts do not care about laser shields or plasma shields. So, uh, yeah, I mean, as far as, as far as that goes, it's actually a very nice little, uh, composition as far as breaking that. But the Shiva also has its missile, which can break all those, which, you know, one way or another. Cortex is going to besiege you. Razorbacks getting to work over here. Getting their, uh, getting their laser guns dirty. Breaking the lines. These are some chads right here. Razor chads, I call them. Those are the names somebody gave them in a comment on one of the videos, and I have wholeheartedly adopted it because they are just beautiful. <laughs> They've even got the funny little haircut, too. This is what I talk about all the time, though. If the Razorback was, 
you know, if its guns were mounted a, a foot higher, like if this, if this cannon was just, I mean, you can almost imagine these like pneumatic cylinders. If it would just raise its arms just a little bit, uh, it would be at least 50% more effective just because it could shoot over those scrap mounts. Which is like, on one hand, it's probably good for game balance that they're not mounted a little bit higher. <laughs> you know, Armada is like, uh, we, we gotta play fair against this whole Cortex faction thing. We better, uh, we better make sure to do our very best to, you know, at the very least try and try and make things even. So they mounted it a little lower so that they shoot at the pointless scrap piles. But still, I, uh, I feel like if I was an Armada engineer, I would cheat a little bit, maybe use my uh, use use my understanding of the Razorback's biggest weakness, its its gun positioning, maybe try and uh, make them a little bit stronger. Oh, hovercraft spam up here. Interesting. All the torpedo launchers in the world aren't going to save you from a hovercraft. Right now, going to be dealt with by a, a bunch of gunboats. Uh, certainly wouldn't be impossible to set up some static defense to clear all this as well. But yeah, I mean, whittling down some of these torpedo launchers. These are a thousand metal apiece. Sorry, a thousand fifty metal apiece for uh, a couple of seekers. I mean... Don't get me wrong, more than a thousand metal and seekers has probably already been sacrificed here, but <laughs> uh, eventually the static defense falls is, is what I'm trying to get at here. Eating up this field is so critical. I'm really shocked by the lack of res subs to eat up all this stuff. Maybe even resurrect all this stuff. I mean, at this point, you might as well just go full blown into production, but man. Bunch of Marauder for the purple team. Purple player on the blue team, I should say. Moving on over to the safe haven island. Trying to uh, find their way over there. No T2 on this island, by the way. Worth pointing out. You can always send a T2 aerial constructor over there eventually. Not a bad idea. Pulsars have been built here, as well as some shield batteries. All sorts of stuff to keep this island safe. Keep this, uh, this front line safe. Meanwhile, cataphracts are moving in down south here. Sharpshooters trying their best, but... Uh, that's, uh, that's a lot of cataphracts. <laughs> There's certainly enough girth and cataphracts here to deal with this thoroughly. EMP bombers are going to need to be routed. Uh, routed. They're all being pulled to deal with this incursion over here. None can be spared to mop up this little group of uh, cataphracts moving down south here. Uh-oh. This could get bad. <laughs> Look at them firing at the planes here. I wouldn't call cataphracts the smartest tank in the book. I would love to see these split up a little more, though. I think people are just going to have a field day. No. I feel like if those were split up a little bit better, the EMP bombers would have had a slightly harder time. But then again, there's a lot of EMP bombers here for the launch players, so maybe it didn't really matter all too much. Are there any nuclear bombers? I feel like a nuclear bomber is also a very succinct way of wrapping up this, uh, this little problem here. Razorback, sharpshooters, pit bulls, pulsars, and more. Holding the, uh, holding the beach here. The red team needs to push in. Oh, okay, they are pushing in. There's a Thor pushing in. I didn't even notice. I wondered why these were paralyzed. It's because we're using the missile. Thank goodness, too. The missile is so, so powerful. It is a EMP missile. It's called a Starburst missile. Uh, you can see it right there in the, oh, uh, middle, the middle one right there. High, heavy, long-range, ground-to-ground EMP Starburst missile. Uh, although it is called a Starburst, I wouldn't want to eat it. Whoa, big uh, explosion over here as more Thors are pushing in. The Starburst missile is a EMP missile, so it shuts down anything it connects with, and it's perfect for breaking static defense. As you saw, those Pulsars were ineffective completely as they, uh, well, they got turned off. Call that the involuntary off switch. And uh, these Pulsars are right on top of the economy here for the green player. Uh-oh. This is not looking good. There's the nuclear bombers. I was waiting to hear those. Juggernaut here, also a fairly decent counter to the Thor. Thor is slow enough that the Juggernaut can semi-effectively deal with it. Shotgun cannons, also very effective at close range. Thing to keep my eyes over here, though. I'm suspecting an imminent and wonderful explosion. Boom. Overkill. <laughs> Lovely little push right here with these Thors. Getting a huge amount of value out. Taking out two, three players, four players. All those Thors right there. Very nicely done. Hard to contest the Thors' power. Whoa, meanwhile, down here on the southern side, those Marauders did find their way into the back lines here. They shut down a massive chunk of the economy here. Oh, 
your uh, your uh, energy converters are showing. <laughs> Rod are having a hard time getting in here, but uh, certainly could be eaten apart. There's no defenses, though. Yeah, Marauder can just get on top of all this. There we go. Marauder does chain react all the build power, all of the energy converters, all of the everything. That is going to be the entire back line of the red team wiped out. Talk about a base trade right there. Thor eventually going to mop up any accessory forces here. But the orange player is now down to all but a lowly constructor. Yikes. Another base about to be targeted down here. Yeah. Black Hydra not really addressed here. No shield batteries available for the Maroon player. Dr. Frog in a little bit of trouble here. Oh, oh, only a few more connections in order to pop that base, and I don't think it'll be too long before we see it. Nuclear Bomber is set to gunfire over here, carving a hole. There we go. Dr. Frog's base does pop, and that's going to be one, two, three, four, eh, we'll call it three and a half bases taken out here for the red team. Quite the counterplay. We now have uh, forces of all sorts, shapes, and sizes moving across the map here. We have fighters moving up north to accompany some nuclear bombers, maybe going to try and get a little bit of damage done over on the western side. We still have tons of cataphracts trying to make their way into whatever cracks, crevices, and other nooks and crannies are available. Any hole in the defenses that they can exploit, they will be certainly happy to. A little bit of a game plan drawn out here. Go down and around, up and under. Not a bad idea. It's actually a great call out. If the green player adheres to this arrow, they will find a extremely exposed opening to the backside of the hot pink player. Nuclear bombers over here do find a connection. No anti-air defenses over here. The air player has been taken out of commission, which means that these nuclear bombers are headed right into the base. Okay. <laughs> nuclear bomber turned around because there was a uh, anti-air out. Sorry, not an anti-air. It's because there was a uh, there was a a ship. A, oh, what are they? What are they called? The aircraft carrier. Oh, we didn't bomb the advanced fusion reactors. What a bummer. Two bombers takes out an advanced fusion reactor in, uh, well, two hits. Sorry, let me clarify that. It takes two hits of a uh, nuclear bomber in order to kill an advanced fusion reactor. Therefore, doing some quick maths, two nuclear bombers can one hit a advanced fusion reactor. There we go. I've made my point. This guy is still just bombing the ground. <laughs> The remaining fighters here for the orange player will fight to the very last. Oh, they actually won that fight. All right, not bad. Still, not the, uh, there's not much left. Orange production is not rebuilding right now. Oh, the orange player actually tapped out of the game. Okay, I was wondering. We don't have anything going on over here. Yeah. Orange player is tapped out of the game and will no longer be commanding his units. At the very least, Dr. Frog is trying his very best. This is a recoverable game. I think Orange Player called it a little bit too soon here. A lot of damage was done over here. Tons of economies were popped. It's just a matter of getting back on your feet and trying to contribute anything you can to the front line here. Capital ships, all of its shots being deflected here by a uh, couple of plasma shields. EMP missile was fired over here to try and shut down these capital ships, but they are unfortunately much too large to be EMP missiled. I think it was an EMP missile. I don't see the EMP missile, but I suspect it was an EMP missile. <laughs> Brightworks is blind confirmed. Either way, uh, I know something was EMP because there's a EMP submarine, which is also a very rare sight. I feel like we don't see that all too often. Juggernaut could be the stale breaker here. Stalemate breaker here, rather. Move the Juggernaut up the beachhead right over here. I mean, it'll die, but that's kind of the purpose. It will die with honor. Glory. Bomber shot down here. A little bit too far forward, I, I believe. And uh, also just not enough of them. Res subs doing their dirty magic, trying to clean up whatever they can over here. Tons and tons of wreckage on the field. And the red player has a sizable navy. Yeah, we're getting into proper dreadnought production. Wow. I mean, that is just all dreadnoughts. Oops, all dreadnoughts. I was saying how I liked them. I, uh, I imagine they'd be in a composition, but sure. This is a lot of firepower too. And it certainly can pack a punch. And we will see that here in just a moment as you see these guys whittling away on this. Also, not to mention that they don't take energy. Notice that the blue player was stalling on energy there for just a second. 
Yeah, I mean, it's one thing that the uh, Dreadnoughts don't need is a stable energy production in order to constantly keep them firing. Now, they don't have any depth charges, so they're not able to clear away these res subs, which is actually kind of a bummer because the blue player is managing to heat up a whole lot of that metal underneath the C4 there. So are the uh, Dolphins here now doing what those gunboats were in the early game, committing to that flanking damage here, and that's so much damage going on that capital ship, and I do believe it will go down shortly here. Juggernaut brought low by a bunch of Thors. Not bad. Go ahead and clear the map there. More forces making their way up the southwestern uh, side here, south su southern beachhead. Oh, Pulsar's firing. Pulsars versus Marauders. I mean, the Pulsars fire so slowly that they have a real problem dealing with Marauders. You kind of need layers of Pulsars, basically. Uh, three of them is pretty dissuading, though. More is always better, of course, but three is not bad. Energy converters need to be rebuilt, though. I think the, uh, yeah, the, the Tan player here, living on a massive economy uh, with not nearly enough energy converters. You can see 5,000 energy being converted by the Tan player versus the uh, 34,000 that they're pulling in every second here. It could certainly be a whole lot more. Wouldn't be surprised if they're actually wasting energy at this point. Marauders trying their very best. Yeah, they need to get in there. Like swimwear. There we go. You get close enough and it doesn't really matter how many shields you have. <laughs> you know, you put the barrel of the gun directly on the Aphis and it works eventually. Uh, we also need to focus up here. Okay, fire was not focused, which caused a lot of problems. Yeah, this is uh, sad to watch. It certainly targets some of the more exploitable buildings here. Energy converters certainly are one of them. Uh, build power, also another one of those. Any building that chain reacts is a very good target here. But I do believe this juggernaut has already broken the, sta the stalemate. In its death, will duty serve? Uh, or will its duty end, I suppose? Well, it's going to get right next to all these fusion reactors over here, though. Yep, this juggernaut is the... Uh, this is the checkmate right here. This juggernaut is going to collapse all of this side. It might die before it kills the advanced fusion reactors. Maybe. Oh, no, it will cause a chain reaction rippling through the front line of the red team, causing a devastating energy and metal shortage all across the, f all across the field of the board. The, uh, the, the, the playing surface. <laughs> the other adjectives for places where you might play a game. And now the hot pink player, I do believe, is going to start feeling that pretty shortly here. Yeah, 700 energy, 31 metal per second. Production is going to come to a standstill very quickly. Nobody ever took the orange player, which is kind of a bummer, considering there were so many T2 labs right there. Rebuilding build power over here and getting this back up and running could have saved them from this naval... Or, sorry, from this aerial aggression. Getting my, uh, my, uh, sea and air mixed up here. Still, though, not really very successful. A lot of fighters went down, but other than that, not the end of the world. Pulsar is very effective against the, uh, the Cataphract here, though. Yeah, I gotta say, doing a great job of holding these back. Thor also contributing significantly, of course. Would love to see the missile popped on that bad boy. EMP may not work on those capital ships, but it sure as hell works against all these Cataphracts. Moving far forward here. The Pulsar really gets its effectiveness from the fact that it can burn through an enemy and then or burn through a unit rather and then continue burning through, right? It can it can pierce through and then kill the next enemy behind it. <laughs> if you're not really doing that with the Pulsar, it's not really going to be getting as much effect as you might be hoping for. Yeah, two of those Pulsar go down to the Cataphract spam. I mean, it's hard to deal with that many of any kind of unit, really, but certainly Cataphract are going to be one of any of any kind of unit. I like that we're seeing this geothermal be rebuilt, noticing that there's no more harassment anymore and getting that advanced geothermal is a easy thing to neglect, but it's nice that we did not in fact neglect that. Juggernaut here gonna be set on a queue to try and pierce through the red, uh, well, the red land-based production anyways. Surprised that we didn't see a land-based economy here for the red player. I feel like that would've been quite worth it. Just realized by the way that the red team is down to just a single commander and I wonder where it is. I'm not seeing it. Usually it's one of the folks in the back line, but I'm not seeing the commander at the time. Oh, there it is. It's Black Diamond's commander. Right in front of me the entire time. <laughs> Black Diamond is the last commander remaining, and so that commander needs to stay alive here. It's also one of the only very effective solutions to deal with this juggernaut. Kind of putting you in a precarious situation where you can either put the commander in arm's way at the 
uh, for, for a decent solution to stop this juggernaut, but also risk winning or losing the game. It's a very tricky call to make. Meanwhile, the blue, the blue team sitting comfortably on four commanders means that they can risk it all day long for the brisket all day long. Bombers will eventually kill a juggernaut, but eventually might be a little too late here. Looks like Devin's going to cloak and run away instead. You can safely degun a juggernaut. Uh, you just have to make sure you're not standing next to a bunch of advanced fusion reactors or anything. <laughs> Construction plane's going to evacuate. I think this juggernaut is too close, though. It will indeed chain react a whole bunch of that economy right there, taking down Black Diamond's main energy production, or main uh, metal production, rather. Energy production is still standing, but just barely. All those advanced fusion reactors clumped up together gets me real nervous when I start to see juggernauts firing away their Marge beam. At this point, the blue team with 1.4 thousand metal coming in per second versus the red team's 418. Things are looking quite dangerous here. <laughs> Quite low for the red team. This is also quite dangerous. A uh, large marauder platypus force <laughs> contingents. They're uh, they're kind of like the the younger and older brother, right? I feel like I feel like that's how I would describe this. Definitely. EMP missiles will launch. That's nice. Try and stun as much of this as possible. Okay. It's uh it's you know it's not a it's not a perfect fix, but it is definitely better than nothing. Utilize every tool to, at your advantage, uh, or at your disposal, rather. Put you in a pretty good spot. The Marauder might just be getting too far, though. And I do believe they are going to jump on top of this base. At the very least, getting right on top of the advanced fusion reactors. We need to see them target these down. Wouldn't mind seeing them split up, though. Peel most of this army off and go put them somewhere else not going to matter though as the main bulk of the production does go down that's going to be Meister being knocked out of this game by a big old marauder push platypus fire support I suppose feels feels a bit weird to say that platypus are not usually what I think of in terms of fire support <laughs> light laser support is really what they offer which is that uh, you know less than impressive their anti-air is not to be understated though Sure. They do have a light anti-air missile, same as the Marauder. Once again, cementing that they are the uh, canonical younger younger and older sibling. Big uh, Hail Mary of bombers are headed over by Black Diamond. Oh, no anti-air defenses over here. Uh, aside from the Behemoth, sorry. Didn't mean to disrespect you, Mr. Behemoth. They're looking for it. They're looking for a miracle here. Gonna find fighters instead, though. Not sure if it's the miracle they're hoping for. Fighters will eventually shoot down the bombers. Unfortunate, because the green player definitely was exposed right here. I mean, there's some flak turrets here, but certainly, I mean, popping a couple of these uh, advanced fusion reactors on the edge cert certainly could have been possible for those T2 bombers. And I do believe that is going to be all she wrote here for the red team. Too much damage has already been done. Oh, a nuke has been charged. Okay, well, might as well let it rip. Basically, everything is anti-nuke covered for the most part here. Green has anti-nuke. Looks like both of the backline players have anti-nuke and uh, most of blue. Although blue is actually still vulnerable. Yeah, you can nuke back here and still take blue out of the game. Pulsar is trying their best to uh, shut down this Juggernaut. Having a hard time. Juggernaut's quite tanky. Eventually, it'll go down. Barely sparing the lives of everything around the juggernaut. <laughs> that is a uh, that is a tricky hold. More and more, the red team does decide to tap out. The blue team managing to snatch victory here in this epic game. On Supreme Isthmus. Let me know what you think about the uh, the change here to the geothermal being far forward. I really like it. I know I saw a post about that being in the works a long time ago and I, I got super excited and now it's here. Let me know what you think about the map. Let me know what you thought about the game. Always love hearing from you guys down in the comment section down below. Like, subscribe uh, so that you don't miss a single daily Beyond a recent video. And I uh, guess that's all I have to say. <laughs> Hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next Beyond a Reason video. Peace out, folks.